Hi, it's Anna here for a minute. Today I want to show you this baby blanket that I did on the LK150. This is a tuck stitch blanket and the trim is also done on the machine. Uh, both of them are fairly easy to do and both sides of the blanket are nice so it makes a nice little gift. Now before we get into it, I want to thank everyone who gave to my buy me a coffee link, my YouTube super thanks and became channel members and everyone who has supported my videos. I appreciate it and thank you. The yarn I'm going to use is this Premier Just Yarn Value. Now this is a new thing from Premier and they sent this to me so I'd like to thank them for that. This is nice soft yarn. It's acrylic. It's a number four medium yarn and um, this color is called sea glass. This um, is marketed as a value yarn. So it's an inexpensive, basic acrylic yarn. So it's good for crafts, kids items, because it washes really nicely, um, larger projects, because there's a lot of it, and um, charity items. Just a nice, basic, number four weight acrylic. And it comes in a lot of different colors. So there's a good, uh, a good selection. And I'm going to put a link in the description so you can go look at it. Now, if this seems familiar, uh, we use this Premier Just Yarn Worsted um, in some of our projects. I think the Christmas stocking. Now, this is the same. This is from Dollar Tree. And it's the same. It's made by Premier. It's pretty much the same yarn, but uh, it's a much bigger skein of yarn. So this is 400 grams, and this is, I think, 50 or 60. I don't know, it says 70. Um, ounce per ounce, this is a better value than even the Dollar Tree yarn, so check it out. So to do this, I'm just gonna make a little miniature one so you can see the process, the stitch, uh, stitch pattern and the trim you will make probably a much bigger one and i'll put the uh, number of needles to cast on and stitches uh, rows etc that you'll need to make a bigger one but it's going to be exactly the same what i do here on video and what you do is going to be the same thing just i'm making a small one so I need a multiple of eight stitches plus one. So I have 41 stitches. You'll have a lot more. Um, so also I just noticed Roxy is down there. So we'll see how long she lasts. She's sleeping. Um, so we're gonna put um, every other needle. I'm gonna select those needles. Starting with the first one, I'm gonna push every other needle back to non-working position and then I'm going to knit across with waste yarn. So then I'll hang the comb and I like to hang the comb with the prongs facing me. I just feel like it stays on better that way and it's easy to get this piece of yarn out of there as well. So then um, to set to, normally when we cast on like with the comb, etc., cetera, we um, pull all the needles we pushed back, back to work. We're gonna do this just slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is pull the first one and then that next one. So I have four there, but I'm gonna leave that one out of work. I'm gonna go here and pull these three, these three, 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 I'm gonna come here, pull that one and that one. So what I need for my setup is four in work, one out of work, seven, 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 four. So however many needles you have, you're gonna have four on each end and groups of seven in the middle. So then I'll just knit back. And I'm on tension seven, by the way. So if I uh, sometimes forget to mention things, so that's another reason you should 
uh, check the description box because sometimes if I make the video and it's I realize I've missed something I can put it in the description and you can look so you should always check that anyway and um, so anyway there's my waist yarn and then I'm gonna cut the waist yarn and you may have noticed this little thing on my carriage this is a thread cutter that I got uh, they're made for sewing machines but I saw someone on YouTube can't remember who it was but I will link if I can find it uh, they had one on there so I decided I needed one of those <laughs> so I it comes with a sticky back that comes with three to a pack I've already put one on a different machine and then so you just can take your yarn and cut it so you don't have to look for your scissors which is nice because or try to cut the yarn with like by breaking it which I hate doing because it hurts my hands um, so that little thing I kind of like that and I put it right there it doesn't seem to get in the way so, so I'll just clip that down now I'm gonna go with the main yarn oh nope I'm gonna put the ravel cord in and I'm doing ravel cord because uh, I'm going to be e-wrapping and this yarn is a little thicker than some of the other ones I use and um, it knits really well but if I e-wrap over this it's going to get too thick to knit everything off so I'm just going to use I have my e-wrap on a little bobbin and I'm going to thread it in my carriage and I'm just kind of holding it and it's unrolling as I go so that's it so then I'm going to move my carriage whoops move my carriage back here um what I need to do now is e-wrap over that um over the ravel cord so I'm going to thread the carriage this is my main yarn and I'm also going to put those needles out to holding position because I find it easier to e-wrap that way. So then I'll e-wrap. The way I do it is I thread my carriage and then pull it from there. And that gives me a little bit of resistance for the e-wrap. So uh, e-wrap is just like that. And you can do the automatic e-wrap if you like over the uh, ravel cord. Um, I showed it in the KX350 automatic e-wrap video. Um, so if you want to know how to do that with the waist yarn and ravel cord, uh, you can go look at that video. And so I'm going to knit two rows tension seven still and see it's a little difficult even with that very thin ravel cord but if you go kind of slow it works so there's my e-wrap now I'm going to put my edge weights on if I can find them there they are so I put some edge weights there this is another thing when you e-wrap you, there's nowhere to hold your weights unless you have ravel cord so it can be difficult so i'm going to knit i knit one row and i'm going to knit my second row so that's the two rows i wanted to start with now we're going to start with the pattern so the pattern can be selected with this tool or the needle beetle either one is fine uh, what i'm going to do and with the needle beetle, it's going to be a little faster. However, um, if you are using it, you'll, if you're starting from the end of the bed, you need some room for it. So I'll put the amount of needles you can use with the needle beetle and with, with the, um, this tool. So that's 
my setup rows. Now I'm going to set my carriage to zero. And the reason I'm doing this now is because this is a six row pattern and setting it to zero is just going to make it easier for me to keep track of where I am in the pattern. So I'll start. So I'll start with this tool I'll show you that. Then I'll show you the beetle. So I start from the third one in that group of four and I just select those. And now I'm going to put the carriage in hold on both sides. So both my levers are on hold. And then I'm going to take this opportunity to mark my pattern. So this is a washable marker and I'm just going to mark the first two, but I could mark all of them if I wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to do the first two because I think this will be pretty easy to do. All right, so I'm in hold and then I'm going to knit three rows in hold. And now I'm going to take this lever, which is in hold, I'm going to flip it back to normal so it's all the way forward, and that's the same on the KX350. And then I'm going to knit a row. And what it'll do is knit off the stitches because I put it in normal. So then, so that's the first four rows of my pattern. Then um, I'm actually going to put a little more weight on it. This is tuck stitch, so it really does need weight. Let's put one there. Uh, with yours, you're going to want, you're going to really want to weight it down. It's tuck stitch. This is a, a number four yarn. It's a little thicker. It's knitting really well, but you do want to weight it down. So now I'm going to pick select the same needles, the same ones I did. So I'm just going to go like that. I shouldn't have come forward and that. So those are the same ones I selected before and I'm not going to move my, uh, I'm not going to move the lever over here yet because I want to just knit one row and they held because I was in hold on that side and now I want them to knit off so I'm going to knit back so then they knit off and then when I get over here I'm going to flip that lever back to hold so that was our pattern so we're six rows we did one set of pattern so now we're going to do it again and I'll just what I do is this is it one more time. I select the needles, carriages in hold. I knit three rows. And then I flip that lever and knit back. And that one did not knit off. Now I know I say this all the time that something didn't knit off. It looks like it didn't knit off twice. So I've got that one to knit through and then that one. So what you do is suppose it was just one knitting off. It's over that. Push that one that's already on their back and then pull the new one through. So I think I need a little more weight. So let me find a few more weights here. So weights are your friend. If you, your machine only came with two, so you probably will want to invest in a couple more. Okay, so now I'm on 10. I was on the um, middle of my first, my second set of patterning. So the carriage is still in hold, normal. This time I select again the same needles and we're going to be just selecting those same needles every time and this time it's going to 
fold on that row and then it's going to knit on that row okay so that's it so one more time this is the pattern it goes select select the needles oh and once you finish when you're on row 12 you're finished with your second pattern make sure to flip that lever back so again it's select the needles knit three rows flip the lever and knit back okay that's the first four rows then select the same needles and your carriage is set up you're in hold here normal here so you're going to hold on that row and knit on this row and when you get back you're going to flip that lever and then you're all set so you're on a multiple of six there so you know you've done three repeats so if you get lost and don't know if you're supposed to do the three rows or the one row you can tell by looking at your row counter so again and this time i'm going to do it with the needle beetle so i've got pulled that one and that one so remember this is an eight stitch repeat so it works really well with the needle beetle and you don't have to pull uh, you don't have to push stitches back needles back so they're selected knit one two three flip the lever and knit okay then select again with the beetle then we're all set to hold that way and knit this way and then we flip that lever back so that's it and then i'm just going to do a few more repeats and then i'll uh, show you how the trim goes so i'll be back okay so i'm on row 60 you're going to do a whole lot more probably unless you're making something very small i have been pretty careful to move my weights up um so this was 10 repeats so i'm at the end of my six row of 10 six row repeats. so i'm at the end of a six row repeat now i'm going to do one more uh, i'm going to select one more time but this time i'm only going to do the three rows and hold and then knit back and i'm not going to do the ones after so i'm going to go one two three and then knit back and that's uh it so actually so i did three there because i started with three and it just kind of balances it out so now i'm going to knit one more row and so the front and the back look the the bottom and the top look the same so i'm going to knit one more row okay now i'm going to bind off and i'm going to bind off from the left and i need at least three lengths of yarn to um to bind this off i use my little cutter again Let's see how good that works so there you go so now i'll bind off with the uh, back stitch bind off so what i want to do is go into the back of the first stitch uh, yeah the back of the first stitch and go back then go behind that second stitch and in through that third stitch 
and you don't really need all this weight at this point but you want so I'll go back one and forward one and I'm just doing this back stitch bind off to match the e-wrap okay so I've done those first four I go back and then just you don't need to worry about that space go to the next one then go back one so don't worry about the spaces this is exactly the same as doing it if you had all the needles on there you're just doing it in every needle that you have a stitch on so I'll just continue with that so I have finished binding off I've taken all my weights and clips and everything off and now I'm just going to take this off of the needle bed just by pushing them all forward and then pushing them back and that's what it's going to look like once it's off the machine so I'll take this ravel cord which is here and just pull it and it should come right out okay and then you just remove the waste yarn so I have my contrast yarn threaded and now I'm going to hang this uh, and do the edging um, I went down in tension to five my carriage is just at normal and this has two sides I consider this the public side but that's the pearl side this is the knit side and I would consider that the back it does okay so I'm gonna hang one stitch and then I'm going to knit two rows one two and this first one's going to be a little loose so you just pull it then reach in there and grab the pearl bar pearl bump and put it on that needle okay so now you have two stitches now I'm going to go in the ones that have two strands this one kind of has three strands because it's just the way it's set up so I'm going to go in the next one here and hang that on that needle and I can pull it out and I'll knit two rows and then I'm going to skip that kind of bulky one and then that I'm skipping that one this is the one with just two strands I'm going to hang that and if you pull it out uh, it gives it it's easier to knit it off so this one is the kind of bulkier one I'm skipping that so you see how that's a kind of knotted up it's hard to tell but you'll see so basically once I've got that going I skip one and pick up this one and I want it to be the one that has just the two strands not the kind of knotty part so I'm going to miss that and get that one skip one and keep going so I'm skipping one getting the next one knitting two rows every time and this uh, this takes a little time but it comes out really nice and it flattens out the edge pretty well so I'm going to knit two rows so see on this side it looks it's looking like that and then on this side it looks a little different and um, so I'll just keep doing that so I'm going to skip that one and get that one skip get the next one skip one so you skip that one get that one and this is you know kind of like uh, sort of like a worm trim sort of like that kind of trim but it's ends up looking kind of much more crochet and it gives you like a nice braid kind of thing on that side so I'll just keep doing that and when we hang this 
when we um so this is the selvage edge um when we get to this part which is the stitches i'm going to do it go in every single one so it's going to change a little so once i get done this once i get to the corner i'll show you how that goes so skip that one now i'm at the e-wrapped edge it looks like one of my stitches got a little bit uh out of got a little stretched out so i'm just going to go in it's the one i was in i'm going to go in that one again okay and then i'm just going to go in every stitch i'm going to grab those two that's where I e-wrapped and I'm just going to grab those two bars and keep going. So on this, uh, the e-wrapped edge, which is the much kind of looser edge, we're going to pick up every single one, but we're going to pick up two bars each time. Okay. So we'll just continue doing that. until we get to the end. And we'll turn, uh, when we get to here, we're gonna turn the corner and then we're gonna be skipping again. So each side is slight, each, so the selvage side and the other side are slightly different. So I got to the corner and then I just sewed, uh, I did the last two rows and sewed it down so that it would look nice. And then I'm going to weave in all these tails off camera. But you can see how this kind of flattened everything out. It's still a little curly, but um, if you block it, there's another one that I did. If you block it, it really lays pretty flat. Um, so the way I blocked it is I got it wet and pinned it out. So uh, if you steam it, it's going to really flatten out. So depending on what kind of look you want, I like the texture. So I wet blocked it. I didn't stretch it too much. I went to this one. I went to about 10 by 10 and that's how it looks. And that's unblocked. And you don't, I don't know that you really have to block it, but that's the back. So if you like my videos, please like and subscribe and ask questions and definitely check out that description box for all the links and directions. So thank you very much and we'll see you soon.